ESPN will broadcast the Superstar Racing Experience next year, the SRX. Does this mean they're interested in NASCAR once again? How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. I hope you had a great weekend. Happy Monday. We've got several major announcements to react to this morning. We're also getting extremely close to 200 thousand subscribers. As of this morning, we were just over a hundred subscribers away. It's gonna happen any day now. My mind is absolutely blown. If you're new to the show, or if you like to check in from time to time, keep up to date on all things NASCAR news, the latest rumors, react to races once the season begins, then hit that subscribe button down below. I truly appreciate the support. I've also been working on some videos outside of the studio the last few weeks that I think I'll be able to share with you before Christmas. You won't want to miss those. But thank you all so much for the support. Truly mind blowing. Let's get to the news. First things first, earlier this morning, Live Fast Motorsports confirmed that Josh Balicki will drive their number 78 Chevrolet for several races this next season. Beginning at Circuit of the Americas, of course, Live Fast Motorsports recently announced they would be switching over to Chevrolet. They'll now be getting ECR engines, a potentially huge step forward for that young race team. Now adding Josh Balicki, a very solid choice in my opinion. Opinion. There's plenty of reasons to be optimistic about Live Fast Motorsports going forward. They're not going to contend this year, but maybe, just maybe, they're starting to take some steps in that direction, which I think is a positive thing. Next bit of news. Brett Moffitt has found a full-time Xfinity Series ride for 2023 with AM Racing. You may have seen their number 22 truck in the now Craftsman Truck Series. Well, now they're going Xfinity racing. Brett Moffat will drive the number 25 car. Big news for Brett Moffat, who lost his seat at Our Motorsports midway through last season due to, from what I could find, just a lack of sponsorship, a lack of funding. I used to be one of Brett Moffat's more vocal supporters, at least when it comes to his on-track talent. Brett Moffat won the 2018 Truck Series Championship, and then a couple weeks later lost his ride due to lack of funding. He landed with GMS Racing and made it to the championship for the next two years, won a bunch of races, but hasn't been able to find a truly secure competitive seat in any NASCAR our series since. Hoping for the best because Brett Moffat, the race car driver, is absolutely talented enough to race in the Xfinity series. But uh, yeah, hopefully this is a successful endeavor. Perhaps the more interesting part of this announcement, though, is the news that AM Racing will align themselves with Stuart Haas Racing and will run Fords. One thing Ford does not have in the Xfinity series is strength in numbers, but adding AM Racing Brett Moffat into the mix that's huge. According to the team's press release, Stuart Haas will provide race cars and technical support to AM Racing, and the team will also get support from Roush Yates Engines. So this 25 car could be competitive? It's hard to say, and honestly, I'm starting to lose track of all the different teams who have switched their alignments this year. Like, we've talked about several teams who were previously aligned with Stuart Haas Racing who now won't be next year, but here's an all-new team that is going to be aligned with Stuart Haas. I'm going to need to, like, drop a flow chart at some point. <laughs> but hoping for the best. That's the big NASCAR news early this week, but there is other major motorsports news that does have a NASCAR connection. Today, the SRX, the Superstar Racing Experience, and ESPN announced a multi-year broadcast agreement. Next summer, six SRX races on six consecutive Thursday nights will be broadcast on ESPN beginning July 13th. These broadcasts are all set to begin at 9 p.m. Eastern time, but the SRX has not yet announced the venues for next season. We don't know exactly what tracks will or won't be on the schedule. We actually don't know who's racing yet. We haven't gotten a solidified list of returning names or new names that might compete. So there are still plenty of unknowns, but we now know that the SRX will be broadcast on ESPN next summer after spending the last two years on CBS. This is big news for a number of reasons. First, let's talk SRX for a moment. Will this be a positive change for that series? I think so, although it may not directly translate to more TV viewers. I mean, see, the SRX is coming from broadcast TV and will now instead be broadcast on cable. 
Yes, it's ESPN. I'm pretty sure every basic cable package on planet Earth includes ESPN, but that could cause viewership to take a small hit. However, I think the new time slot, Thursday night as opposed to Saturday night, I actually think that would benefit the SRX. Thursday nights typically, historically speaking, see more people at home watching TV than Saturday nights. Saturday nights, especially in the summer, more people are out doing things. They're not home on their couch watching the television. Where I think this will truly benefit the SRX, though, is getting bigger name drivers to compete. They were still able to get, you know, Chase Elliott, Ryan Blaney, existing Cup Series stars to compete in their Saturday night events. But now that the races will be on Thursday night, they won't conflict with existing NASCAR or IndyCar race weekends. They might have a much easier time getting guys like Chase Elliott or Kyle Larson or you name it, stars from the IndyCar and Cup Series. They'll have a much easier time, I believe, getting them to compete in their races now that they're in the middle of the week. You get more superstars in the superstar racing experience that will increase viewership, that will build hype. So uh, I think think it's a good change, but we'll have to wait and see. It's worth noting that their performance on CBS the last two years, I believe, fell below expectations. Like, in 2021, the SRX averaged 1.25 million viewers per race. Then last year, they averaged about 1 million flat, so a 20% decrease in viewership from year one to year two. There was this quote from Austin Karp writing for the Sports Business Journal last summer. He wrote, heading into year one, SRX stakeholders had hoped for closer to 3 million viewers per race. The audience this season for SRX is also well below what CBS was averaging on Saturday and those primetime windows in 2020 and 2019. Mm. Now, expecting 3 million viewers for your all-new racing series I think was always a bit of a stretch. But averaging less viewers during those time slots than CBS was previously getting? That, that stings. So as far as the SRX is concerned, we'll see what the future holds. I've enjoyed watching it each of the past two years. This past summer, I actually got to attend my first ever SRX race at Nashville Fairgrounds, and I had a blast. So I hope this switch to ESPN means a bright future is ahead for the SRX, but we'll see if this new series is truly set up for long-term success. But now let's talk about how the SRX is acting as a disruptor, particularly when viewed by other major motorsport series like NASCAR, who's about to enter you know, hot negotiations with companies like ESPN, CBS, and other major networks and media partners around their 2025 and beyond media rights deal. Because that's what the SRX is. It's not huge, but it is a key disruptor. And even the CEO, Don Hawk, used that word in their press release today. When we had the opportunity to pitch the concept of Thursday Night Thunder on ESPN, it was my firm belief this would be another disruptive and monumental moment in SRX and racing history. Reuniting race fans with ESPN on short tracks with superstar drivers all across the U.S. for years to come. ESPN now owns the rights to the SRX as well as the U.S. rights to Formula One. They've been linked to NASCAR for some months now as a potential key player in their impending media rights negotiations. So will ESPN go all in? SRX, F1, and NASCAR. And if so, how will ESPN Plus factor into this? Most articles I've read suggest NASCAR will see at least some form of streaming as part of their next TV deal. Could just be some practice and qualifying sessions, could be the occasional truck or Xfinity race, but could cup races in just three years time end up exclusively on a streaming platform like an ESPN Plus? That's something to factor in particularly when discussing ESPN, because there are some networks out there like Fox who really doesn't have an existing streaming service or platform that NASCAR would be exclusively broadcast on. ESPN has ESPN Plus, NBC has Peacock, CBS has Paramount, Paramount Plus, whatever it's called. There's always Amazon out there, which is their own giant. So it is something to think about. Now, while we're on the topic of the SRX and you know their previous home, CBS, a top CBS executive did say last year that they were not interested in bidding on either NASCAR or IndyCar rights at this time. But that was 18 months ago. You never know. Maybe they've changed their mind. Maybe the business has reorganized itself in such a way that CBS could still be a player for NASCAR. But anyway, that's a tangent. ESPN swallowing up the SRX could be absolutely nothing. But I don't see it that way. These are potentially tumultuous times for NASCAR, the sanctioning body. You've got the race teams yelling at you from one side that we need more money. We need a higher share of the TV revenue. We need a larger pot overall to go around or we're not going to be able to succeed. We're threatening to start our own racing series. That's what the teams are doing. They've got that on one side. Meanwhile, on the other side, they have to negotiate this deal and there's new competition out there like the SRX working with ESPN. Again, a company who has been, I think, linked closely to NASCAR as 
as someone who is very interested in the 2025 and beyond broadcasting rights. Does this mean ESPN is more interested in NASCAR now? Are they gonna treat the SRX this summer as like a trial run? I think this will have an effect on NASCAR's next TV contract. Hopefully it turns out to be a positive one, but right now the last thing NASCAR needs, if you're looking at this from the sanctioning bodies perspective, is even more competition for those highly coveted TV media dollars. So we'll see. In my opinion, the SRX is currently succeeding at being a disruptor, as their CEO called themselves. I haven't even asked the most important question of all. Does this mean Alan Bestwick is coming back to ESPN? <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. It would tickle the uh, nostalgia bone in my arm here. <laughs> anyway, let me know down in the comment section below. How do you feel about the SRX moving over to ESPN? Does this mean anything for NASCAR and their impending negotiations? Share your thoughts down in the comment section below. That's gonna do it for this episode. Again, we are so close to 200,000 subscribers. The final push, I truly appreciate your support. And also all of you on Patreon going above and beyond to support the channel. I couldn't do this without you. You guys thank you all so so much we'll be back again very soon thank you so much for watching this episode i will see you in the next one